So last time we talked about our dad and his uh, the mischief he got into, how he just popped out of nowhere into our lives and basically destroyed it. So we're going to pick up on that. And we also teased a bonus bar- Barva story about bonus. Yeah. It's all linked to, to the whole affair. So it's going to, it's going to, you know, it's going to make sense why Barvas is back. <laughs> but uh, look, uh, once my dad got arrested, it was not just him. It was him and all his brothers because it was like a family affair, you know. His brothers, his uh, his fucking uh, uh, sisters, and he had a big family, you know. We ourselves, our family uh, on our mom's side, we basically stayed to ourselves, mm-hmm. you know. We never really, we didn't even really fuck around with, with my mom's side of the family except for her dad a little bit. Yeah, he'd occasionally show occasionally up. Occasionally he'd show up or he'd show up and that's it. Uh, we're a very insular family. So when dad came in, it was like a shock to the system. And me going and meeting my cousins and all that, I was like, what the fuck? Uh, but he was arrested and I didn't have to interact with those people <laughs> for a long time. Uh, he was arrested and all his brothers and sisters got arrested. And apparently from from what he told my mom and in turn was told to me this is again don't hold me a hundred percent to this because this is just what he told her and what we put together based on that and what his mom told us eventually so you know it comes down the grapevine a little bit but apparently he when when he left my mom the first time when i was born uh, he, he, you know, bounced around, tried to find his footing in the world. He ended up in Colombia where he made some links with people. Okay. How? I don't know. <laughs> he made some fucking connects yeah. and, and links with people. And those connects ended up being essential to him and his brothers being part of this drug corridor that, that happened. Okay. Apparently him having these direct connections pissed off somebody else in this trade that they were involved in and because of that uh certain pursuits against them were were launched if you will long story short somebody put the finger on them when they were transporting a massive amount of stuff over the border and they got caught and they got caught with a big ass load of shit him several of his brothers and cohorts got caught and uh Whoever that person was, uh, he apparently in the letters was loath to say the names because, you know, they read your letters and he didn't want to stir shit. But whoever it was, he felt that he had been knocked out by an opposing cartel group, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, So he got caught. They got caught. And here's the fucking scary part. This is when we found out (laughs) the length and breadth of his fucking shit. First, we found out he'd already been married. My mom's marriage, we found it pretty strange that he took her to Mexico to marry her. And the reason was, he was married in fucking America. Yeah. And in Mexico, they'll just, whatever, give them people money and they'll do it, you know? So he just went and got a marriage certificate mm-hmm. in Mexico. We got married in Mexico. Yeah, us. That's why we 69 yeah. all the time. It wasn't good, dude. <laughs> I still don't like the fact that this uh, honeymoon is still going. God. Freaking straight 69ing all day. <laughs> It's, it's just a cartwheeling around 69 And the crevices reek, too. Um, so anyway, yeah, he, he got involved with this fucking sh- uh, 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 shenanigans here, pulling the wool over my mom's eye with that. Uh, apparently, the other woman knew about this, and she hated my mom. Uh, but, you know, I guess she was like, fuck it, I'm what in the money or whatever. What are you going to do, right? Uh, yeah, well, what are you going to do? Maybe she was afraid of him. Maybe she didn't care because money. I don't know. But she knew. Mom didn't know. Uh... And uh, when he came into our lives, he bought us tons of shit, vehicles. I used to get an allowance of like 400 bucks. Keep in mind. Damn, homie. Keep in mind, we've always lived under the poverty line. Even now. Back, this was like early I was 90s. a kid in the early 90s getting 400 bucks for an allowance all of the sudden. I was like, holy shit. Suffice it to say, I wasted it on garbage. Porno? But no. What? I'm a fucking kid. Where am I going to get porno, man? I but know. Anyway. You had a weird freaking porno ring back in the day. No, that was just me copying tapes. With the porno <laughs> ring. Yeah, but that was like until I was in high school. It was fucking oh, shit. later. I feel like my my concept of time with your life is all messed up. Yeah, well, when you're younger, you're... 
frame, their time frames are all fucked up. Mine too. Mm. I'm like, oh, uh-huh, wait a minute, that was the 80s? But anyway, <laughs> anyway, this was the early 90s. Yeah. And he, all of a sudden, he gave me fucking 400 bucks, you know, sometimes 500 bucks. I was like, whoa, dude, <laughs> this is crazy. But I was so frivolous with it that, you know, I, he ended up being like, nope, not going to give him any more money. That's how bad I was. Damn. I remember telling my grandma, dude, please tell him to fucking open up them coffers, baby. I was going to just get my sweet ass Batman on or whatever yeah, the fuck I was into. sharks. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, he came and and he and he launched money around. You know, he bought uh, 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 house. Uh, he bought fucking cars. Lion uh, tables. No lion. Yeah, he bought a lion table. A lion table. Yeah, the one we have at the at the at the kitchen. Nah, that shit's fucking old as hell. He's homeboy. got lion. Yeah, nah, nah, that shit's ancient, dude. He, they told me he bought that. He bought that before that fucking. That was like. That shit's been around since I was born. The point is, we have a lion table. It's not a lion table. It has dude, lion paws as feet. Dude, don't just... ruin the illusion. Of what? A fu- who wants a fucking lion for a table? It was cool sounding. It's not cool sounding. It's fucking shitty. It's a shitty table with shitty lion feet. Damn it. But anyway, dude. the point is, that was when, when he was here originally. Oh, I didn't know that. But anyway, he bought a bunch of shit. This I didn't, is what I'm for saying. some reason, I thought this lion table was worth like $10 trillion. Fuck no, that piece of shit sucks balls, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the point is he bought a bunch of shit, he threw a bunch yeah. of money around, and and not as much as you'd expect him to, considering he he had fucking farms everywhere and and land and and, and cattle on that land and yeah. fed horses and a fucking ape for crap's sake, <laughs> you know he should probably throw in a little money, but ultimately I'm grateful that he didn't because yeah. when he got caught, the brothers of his that were involved and they all were. Uh, in his in his little you know illegal ring of traffic that didn't get caught were immediately picked off. One of them got run over mysteriously over nine times by an eighteen wheeler. That makes One sense. time I get fucking going back and forth over a guy. No, one of one of uh, his sisters was robbed at her store, which was just a front, by the way. Uh, and by robbed, I mean they went in, they shot her head off, and just left the money there. They also killed her daughter, by the way. Damn, homie. Uh, everyone that wasn't arrested was wiped out, killed, straight up. Only an aunt and an uncle, which are a couple coincidentally, made it out of that alive. And I remember when that was going down, it was either arrest or murder for that side of the family. My mom and grandma being like, holy shit. This motherfucker just dragged us into yeah. some shit. And we have shit that he bought us. They're going to fucking make the link somewhere and they're going to fucking kill us. I remember that being a pervasive fear. The good thing is that all the shit that he bought my mom, he put in her name. So thankfully, I'm assuming that's what it was. It was no tenuous. I mean, the, the link there was tenuous at best. Uh, so they never came after us. The closest we got was uh, one time that, that aforementioned aunt and uncle that... that managed to get out of this without a scratch uh she got out of it because her husband was involved in it it, directly with my dad but she just ran a store that was a front for them she still runs that store by the way and it's not a front anymore but anyway that was a front store yeah at one point damn homie she ran destroying my freaking well she she didn't (laughs) she ran that store she wasn't like involved with it you know to her it was this is my store that's but she it was being used as a front this is like the only person that i know from my family from that side side, yeah yeah. she's really nice but anyway she was running the store that that her husband bought her but it was a front that he was using so anyway she was like she was as equally shocked as my mom she was like what the fuck because that uncle Unlike my dad wasn't spending a shit on fucking chimps and shit. He was, they lived in a trailer. They, they had a pretty moderate lifestyle. He kept it on the down low, in other words. So he got caught because they all other ones got caught. But anyway, uh, she was like, holy shit. But when, when they were looking for her husband, uh, my mom and, and grandma were visiting her. And the fucking FBI raided her place. And they were, my mom and grandma were like, what the fuck, man? And, uh, you know, they didn't find him and they didn't find anything. And they avoided trouble there. But that was the closest we got. Uh, So this motherfucker almost got us killed, basically. Uh, Thankfully, we didn't. We survived. Um, And he ended up in prison. 
uh, uh, fucking, I don't remember the year he, he died. Uh, I'm going to say it was about 10 years later, 2004-ish. Yeah, I think it was either 4 or 5. Somewhere around there. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. Maybe 3. Here's the thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. He had gotten a, a uh, it was a federal case because of, of the drugs and the amount and all that shit. He was in a federal prison for the bulk of those years. He had he gotten uh, uh, 99 to life, by the way. He was going to spend his life in prison. He was in a federal prison for the bulk of those 10 years that I'm mentioning. And 10 or so years. And then one day, out of the blue, he gets transferred from federal prison to state prison. What? Why? His case was federal. His time was federal, but for some reason he got he got transferred from federal to state. And I remember his letters to my mom being panicked, frenzied, like some shit's gonna happen. This shouldn't be happening, and yet it's happening. By that time, by the way, all the other brothers and sisters that had gotten arrested, not the ones that got killed on the outside, but the ones that got arrested, they had all died in prison. Damn, homie. Okay, and by died, I mean killed. Yeah. He had survived. Marked. He, mind you, by survive, I mean he. There was no attempts on his life. Yeah. He did. He wasn't any special protection or nothing. He was just doing this time. But all of a sudden, he gets transported from federal prison to state prison, and he was like, "What the fuck?" So his letters all of a sudden were very doom and gloom, uh, basically saying goodbye without saying goodbye, right? But then he got moved, uh, and nothing happened, right? For a while, anyway. Then one day, as you mentioned in the previous video, we got the news that he had passed away. And the official reason they gave us was that he had collapsed on a, on the basketball court. Heart attack. Heart attack. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, it happens. You know, by then he was a bigger guy. Yeah, rotund. Uh, but, you know, it made sense, right? But, uh, it, and it was, yeah, a little sad, but whatever. I mean, we didn't really know the guy, right? So, whatever. Uh, the body had to be uh, uh, received, as it were. And this is where it gets weird. Remember I told you he was married to that other woman? Well, that other woman came to my mom and said, her and, and my dad's uh, mother, which I guess is our grandmother, but we don't see her that way because she sucks. When we say our grandmother, we mean the woman that raised us, that adopted our mom. Our dad's mother is... Our grandmother by blood, but we never fucking knew her and or care about her. And she was a bitch. But anyway. Still alive? Fucking no. But anyway, she and the woman he was married to came to my mom and asked her if she could receive the body. And as much as I could, uh, as far as I could surmise, I should, I should say, the reason is because they were afraid mm. that they would be, you know, exposed, yeah. you know. And my mother, against all wisdom, decided to accept the body. Damn. So the body was received at our local mortuary. We just happened to know the mortician. Uh, my grandmother was really tight with him for some reason. Yeah, his name was Mortimer. Mortimer the mortician? <laughs> yes, Mortimer. But anyway, uh, we just happened to know the mortician. And he was like, yeah, look, I'll do my best to, to, to make sure and just keep this as under wraps as possible. So he had to go and receive the body, pick it up, and bring it. And, you know, get it ready and all that stuff, right? Well, when he came back, he was like, look, uh, I think that it's imperative that you should know that this man did not die of a heart attack. Uh, he was like, I'm not, I know I'm not a doctor, but this man uh, did not die of a heart attack. Why did he say this? Because apparently the body had stab wounds all over the fucking place. Damn. That being said, I didn't know this. he told our grandmother, and everyone agreed that we shouldn't say anything about it. That's why I never heard of it. And just, well, you, nobody told you shit back then, dude. Yeah, I was you little... were like fucking a fetus. <laughs> well, you were like maybe 10 years old. Yeah, uh, 20, probably. Uh, 11, 12 at most. Uh, you know. No. But anyway, the point is, uh, he was stabbed, basically. Or, excuse me, so it seemed, uh, uh, he, you know, suggested and everybody agreed, yeah, we shouldn't say 
anything. Just let it be, man. I mean, he's dead, right? Uh, so we informed uh, 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 the other woman and, uh, that, that we weren't going to say shit. They agreed. Everybody was like, yeah, that, you know. Uh, well, I mean, what are we going to do, you know? And, and and thus he was interred, you know. I did go to the reception. It was weird, dude. It looked like a freaking doll. I didn't. I didn't go to that, so I. I, I didn't. You know. I don't know. Looked like a doll. Uh, I mean, well, yeah. Most people. Most dead people do. Doll like. You, know, you know that. You know the guy. You know uh, Frank's uh, makeup in, in Always Sunny. How they made him up for the. The mortician yeah. look like that, dude. Jesus, it's like damn, homie, clown status. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go to the fucking service or anything like that, so I don't know. But uh, I remember. Oh, I have a mini story. All right, that happened there. Uh, this is sucky, but uh, it was there, and I had gone up, and I, I sat down, and uh, our brother was there. I almost said his name. Our brother was there, in front of in, in front of me, and he like, <laughs> he like goes back like this and goes. And tells me it silently, dude, you gotta go wipe your butt. <laughs> it freaking smell like caca. God, man, what the hell? And I remember he gave me, he told me exactly how to wipe it, to not smell like feces. <laughs> Jesus. It was, it was to put a, a finger in the thing and go like this, and That's then go. Good Shh. advice. That's sound advice. I was like, the hands gonna smell like poop. Nah, oh, man, you gotta put the fucking, uh, you know, wipe the ass. First, then you gotta, you know, you gotta spelunk a little. Not with no, your bare no, ass No, 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 no. That's what he said. He put said, tear a hole in the toilet paper, go like this, grab the poop, and then go. F- ah, fuck that shit, yo. No, that's not how you do it. That's another conversation, damn it. The point is, that's gross. That happened. <laughs> I smell like feces, apparently. During a funeral. During a f- funeral feast. At least you have the excuse of being like 10, 12 years old. Yeah. I don't know about 12. It's too much, man. I don't, it wasn't 12. I think it was like in 2010, 11, something like that. Yeah, so I was 10. <laughs> anyway, the point is, uh, what was the point? Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, he passed away in prison. Yeah. So I promised a, a fucking Barba story. Here's the Barba story. While he was in prison, he started writing mom and... And uh, and myself, I would get letters. And this is one of my biggest regrets is that I never wrote him back much. You know what I'm saying? I, partially because I didn't have, I didn't know what to say. I, I didn't have any real foundation with this guy. So I did write him a few times, but I remember putting it off too much. You know what I'm saying? Like they would tell me, write him. He wants you to write him. And I just wouldn't. So when he passed away, I regretted that. When I was in prison myself, I knew the fucking impact of that. You know what I'm saying? And it was it was fucking rough, dude. You know what I'm saying? It was rough to think of this guy who made a horrible mistake. And in that time in prison, he had changed a lot. In prison, you either change or you don't, man, you know? People either get worse or they don't. And he was a dramatically different person. And it was really sad to think that this guy wanted to feel human, to feel some connection with somebody, and I just didn't fucking do anything, you know? That sucks fucking ass to think about, uh, but I can't change that. But, you know, well, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? But anyway, uh, while he was alive, he would occasionally write, and I would occasionally write back. And, uh, uh, but he mostly he would write my grandmother or mom, right? Well, anyway, during this time, I was involved in a relationship with, if you've heard some of our story times, there was a chick named, that I dubbed Ronnie in the story, uh, the, you know, and she was this, uh, she was this goth chick that came from a hillbilly family, basically. Yeah. And, uh, she was a weird chick, to say the least. She was pretty cool, but... A strange person uh, definitely I don't know man <laughs> unique I guess I mean you met her I don't know how you describe her strange whatever yeah. but uh, you know we got along pretty good so whatever I was in a relationship with her at the time and there was this person that had it out for Ronnie's brother and this person was like this fucking dude, man. I don't know, like this 40-something-year-old dude that was kind of known for drinking behind the 7-Eleven, I guess. That was like what he was known for. 
for some reason he hated Ronnie's brother. I don't know why. I don't know the backstory to that. He hated him though. Coincidentally, Ronnie's brother now in prison. But anyway, uh, I remember me and Ronnie were going towards the fucking uh, 7-Eleven to pick up some fucking bullshit. Uh, probably some fucking Takis because she's a white girl. So That's you know weird. they love the the fucking Takis. Takis in general is like a girl snack. Yeah, really, just in general, girls, Takis. Maybe what it's is that? because it's phallic. I don't know, man. Maybe that's why I love them so. <laughs> Knew it. Anyway, fucking, uh, we were going to, to the fucking 7-Eleven, and as we were coming out, uh, oh, by the way, the, we were walking from her parents' business, <coughs> which is across some train tracks, and across those train tracks, here's her business, train tracks, and then across them is the 7-Eleven. So we were walking from her parents' business, where we used to hang out for the bulk of the day, and then to, to the 7-Eleven, and as we were walking back to her parents' business... This fucking guy, we're just going to call him Artie. Artie is like, hey, fuck you. Like, what the fuck? What's this? I didn't know about the shit between him and her brother at that point. I was like, what the fuck is this? And he's like, hey, you stupid bitch. This and this and that. And he runs and charges at her. And I'm immediately like, in what the fuck mode, right? So he's literally like fucking the flashing over, dude. <laughs> And I get in between her and he, yeah, you know, and I get in between him and her, and I shove him wow, hard, man. And then he's like, "What the fuck, you fat bitch, blah, blah, you know, drunk and sloppy and shit." And I'm like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And uh, she's like, "Babe, let's go, let's go." So she is pulling me away from him. I still don't know what the fuck is going on, but I'm like, "What the fuck is this shit?" You know. So I'm like riled up now. And, you know, she's pulling me, so I kind of follow her. And we're getting near the railroad tracks, and this little fucking dork knob is, is still uh, yelling at us. So we cross the street. Before we reach the railroad tracks, we cross the street, and he's screaming at her. You white bitch, this and that. And I'm like, what the? How did this get racial all of a sudden? <laughs> you know? So he follows us across the street. A, a car almost hits him, you know? And we cross the railroad tracks, and this dude comes up and charges her again. And I turn to her, and I go, go get your parents. And when I turn back, this son of a bitch socks me in the fucking face, dude. Back! Hard he socked me. But I was so fucking, like, pumped up with yeah. adrenaline that I didn't feel shit. And this is one of my favorite moves I've done a few times. <laughs> my glasses flew out. Yeah. And uh, that was all I could think about. Did you do the... And they fly off and they go. I didn't, I don't know if I did the slow turn, but <laughs> they flew off and I remember being pissed at that. Yeah. And I turned to him and I said, you hit my glasses, you fucking bitch. That's what I said. And then uh, the fear in his face was like, fuck. And I love that because I've done that before. You know, I, I don't know if it's that, that, that zone I get in, you know, but I've been lucky at one not to been, uh, be knocked out when I get punched. <laughs> Stabbed. Yet. Uh, but the few times that I've been in a fight, uh, uh, two out of three, that situation has happened where I get punched and I'm just like, you fuck, do it again, you know? So anyway, I turned to this motherfucker and I'm like, you fucking knock my glasses off, you bitch. And he had this look on his face and I immediately I latched onto it and I said, fucking hit me again. I'm going to give you a fucking shot to get it right this time. And he hits me and I don't do shit. I'm just there, like, standing in him. I'm like, yeah, run, bitch. And he fucking runs. And I'm like, fuck yeah, bitch. Now I'm, like, pumped up, right? And I, <laughs> at that moment, You're about to pump at that moment, shit. I hear uh, uh, my, my girlfriend uh, at the time, Ronnie, I hear her go, oh, Ahab. And I turn, and she looks at me, and she immediately starts crying and hits the floor. And I'm like, what the fuck? the hell's wrong with this and her parents come up to me and they're like oh, are you okay i'm like hey, just help me look for my glasses i don't know where you knocked them out so they find my glasses they take me back into their business and that's when i found out why she freaked the fuck out this motherfucker had made me fucking bleed buckets man like all oh, my fucking mouth and my shirt were all full of blood but i was so pumped up that i didn't fucking even know so anyway cops show up <coughs> excuse me and they're like do you want to press charges and i'm like fuck yeah fuck that shit get that motherfucker right um, so anyway, long story short, they end up apparently catching the guy. Uh, I dropped the charges, by the way. Uh, they end up catching, I dropped the charges, by the way, because I didn't want 
them to get in more trouble with him. But anyway, uh, uh, th- uh, the dude, I guess, spent a day maybe or two in locked up, and then they let him go. So, that should have been the long and short of it, right? But as I mentioned, at this time in my life, my dad was writing me every now and then. And now I had something to talk about. Yeah. So I told him this story about the fucking, uh, you know, what happened, what I just told you, basically. You wrote right? down the part with the flash. <laughs> I told him especially the doodly <laughs> He was reading, it was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> it was like 10 pages of doodly <laughs> What the fuck? But anyway, I told him that shit. And I remember being particularly proud of that. I got to tell my dad that, that one, you know, I had this girl, and two, that, that you know, I got in this fight, and then the dude got scared, and all, you know, I was like, hell yeah, this is a cool story to tell my pops. Uh-huh. He's going to be proud or whatever the fuck, right? Idiot, uh, young, young thoughts. So I send him this fucking uh, letter, all right? Are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. Get ready to get your wig knocked the fuck off. My wig? At that point, I was already living in this place, you know? So, anyway, I remember being home and my uh, my grandma coming over to my place and telling me in Spanish, uh, there's someone here to talk to you. Be careful. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Uh-huh. I don't know if she knew who this was or not. I don't know. But I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like, I guess. You know, because uh, they used to come in to... Uh, uh, my grandmother's house to get to over here because yeah. you know there's a fence at my place but anyway so she lets him in and I hear a knock on my door and I look up the peephole and guess who's standing outside fucking Barbas what fucking Barbas is standing outside my door so I knew I was coming so I put the hat on because it was actually freaking shocking yes I, I could tell by your yeah. mega <laughs> shit reaction <laughs> no anyway, but serious what the outside my door was fucking Barbas I opened the door. He looked the same as he did, like, when you were a kid? Basically, dude. Like, you know, just a little bit older, I guess, you know. But here's this monument of a dude. And I opened the door, and I'm like, what the fuck? I'm not even scared. I'm kind of, I'm just in fucking shock and awe that this is, like, a thing that's happening, right? Uh-huh. And I'm like, uh... But in Spanish, mind you, so I'm like, uh... You want to come in? <laughs> I mean, what do you say to this fucking guy? Yeah. Get the fuck off my lawn? No. And he's like, I was about to say in Spanish. He's like, I'm, I'm trying to translate his words here. So they might not sound as cool in English as they did in Spanish. But he was like very direct. Tell me what you told your dad. And I was like, what the fuck? I was literally like, what the fuck? Because about two months had passed. Yeah. And I was like, huh? And he goes, tell me what you told your dad in that letter. And it took me a few minutes, a few seconds, I should say. But I was like, oh, uh, okay. So he re- didn't come in, by the way. And I told him everything. And he's like, okay. Wait, in Spanish, he was like, that bueno. And he walked away. And I was like, what the hell? And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> now, mind you, as I'm telling him the story, I told him the name of the guy. Oh, no. Uh, uh, the, which, you know, we've decided to dub Artie in this yeah. story. I told him the name of the guy. You know, the full name, no less, by the way. Damn, homie. Uh, because that's what everybody, you know how some, some yeah, towns, yeah, yeah. that's People like, oh, that's it. John Smith. Yeah. You know, that's how they know the guy. Yeah. So that's how I told the like story. there's like 8,000 Johns. Yeah. But, you know, so in this town, that guy is, you know, again, making up a name here. Uh, Artie fucking. Scotch. Scotch, yeah. God, that's the worst. <laughs> Artie Scotch Ar- tape. Artie, uh, Artie Rodriguez. Oh, that's Artie Rodriguez over there. You know, so he was like, okay, so fucking walks away. And I'm like, what the Dude, was fuck? that's it? Hold on. No, but that's all he said. That's all he said. Damn, that's so horrifying. Then I'm like, dude. And at that precise moment, the only thing that's ringing in my mind is that memory of my cousin telling me, don't look him in the eyes. And I'm like, holy shit. So the next day I go to Ronnie's, uh, 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 Play. Well, by me and my Ronnie's places, we used to hang out at her parents' store, and then afterwards we'd hang out, you know, uh, uh, either somewhere else or at her parents' house. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I go to, you know, after after school, I go to her to to hang out with her, and I'm like, I need to talk to your parents right now. So I uh, I bring them in, or they come up, I should say, and they're like, oh, uh, you know what's going on? I'm like, look, 
And I told him about my dad and all that shit. And I said, look, man, if someone comes in here and they look like this, uh, just don't look them in the eyes. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> That's it? That's all what I said. And uh, you met you met Ronnie's mom. She's a yeah. very... Uh, she's a whip of a woman if there ever was one. Let's put it that way. She is like one of those stubborn bullheaded yeah like bar chicks you know what i'm saying yeah, like she can uh, be you up yeah yeah she's and rude. she can be you at tetris yes oh god she's like tetris master of tetris it's scary how good she's at tetris but anyway she was like nope that motherfucker doesn't let me fucking look the way i want to look this she was like going off and i'm like no oh, dude you don't want to fucking <laughs> mess with bottom hell no dude you don't trust me dude you know what i'm saying don't fuck with this guy Lo and behold, uh -huh. the next time I go, they tell me, and specifically, uh, her uh, Ronnie's dad tells me, "You're not gonna believe it." Oh no! You're not gonna believe it. But he basically told me that for the first time, that since he's known his wife, that she was like, <laughs> nothing to be said. <laughs> this dude showed up, asked what happened. Barbas, I mean, uh -huh. asked what happened verified i guess the details ah dude this is horrifying just as he had me yeah and then just left left and dude I, and i was like holy shit and i remember well, i don't remember but they told me this is the most riveted i've been in. <laughs> this is exactly what they told me ahab we want you to know that we're not going to judge you based on what your your father is or did or anything like that they were very accepting yeah. of the situation and they're like, do you think this guy's going to do anything? I'm like, I fucking know, man. I've only seen him once before my life. And he was scary as shit back yeah. then. So here's where this gets interesting. Mm -hmm. For the, about a week, I hear nothing. I see nothing. I tell nothing to no one. The only people that knew about this were me. Uh, I mean, my grandma knew that he had shown up. Uh, that's why I don't think she knew who this guy mm -hmm. was. Because she never really said anything about it or nothing. And uh, Ronnie and, and her parents. Uh, uh, that's it. So I'm like, okay, nothing happened. It's all good. I'm good. <laughs> oh, what do you think happened? Dude, that guy die? The, the guy did not die. Oh, okay, good. The guy did not die. But what do you think happened? He got beat up? He got beat to a bloody fucking pulp. Damn, homie. He got beat to a bloody pulp and they found him behind the 7-Eleven. Fucked up. And I remember it was a Sunday. I don't know if that's when it happened, but I remember it was a Sunday. Yeah, I went to no, no. I went to Ronnie's uh. house, and I show up, and there was this air of fucking like you know when the, the when the when the uh, I shouldn't have said air before, but when the air is taking out of a room, yeah, that fucking like sense that that feeling yeah. in the room, and I walked in and I'm like, what happened? And they're like. Oh, well, they found Artie. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. You're like, damn, this homie dead. Uh, yeah, I thought he was dead. Yeah. But they were like, no, he, he's he's fine. He's in the hospital, whatever the fuck. I can only assume that this was the work of Varvas. Damn, homie. And that's the last I ever saw of this guy. Uh, and he remains this fucking, like, monstrously mythical figure in my fucking damn. head. Varvas does. I'm conflicted in so many ways. On one end, that's kind of a cool thing. Yeah. For our dad to do. Watch oh, Really, it's not because. No, 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 it's not. But hear me out. It's kind of a sweet thing, you know? He's it's, watching yeah, yeah. out for us. It's sweet in that. But at the same time, horrifying as hell. It's sweet in that, you know, weird criminal Man. underworld macho way. Yeah. But at the same time, yeah, holy shit. Especially because he had very drastically changed yeah. a lot of his perspectives on things but apparently somebody fucking hit him in the face was not a thing that he wanted Damn. to happen Barbas. Uh, so he sends Barbas. dude that means Barbas is probably still out there well here's the thing that's the bigger mystery to me my dad and a lot of, well i should say my dad and every one of his brothers except for one and all his sisters uh all got arrested and or killed a lot of their cohorts got arrested uh, and presumably killed. But Barvas did not. Barvas somehow got away scot-free from all this shit. 
long enough for him to get a fucking phone call, presumably, or maybe a letter. I like, don't know. What, like ten years later? Ten years later, damn, and still go and beat some motherfucker to a pulp. Cause I'm, I'm. Look, I don't know if he beat that motherfucker to a pulp, but he did. This guy shows up out of nowhere. He asks these questions not only to me but to like these a people. Terminator, dude. And then a week later, this happens. You know what I'm saying? Like just by chance, this fucking happens. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Terminator. So anyway, that's the story of Varvas. I'm conflicted. I feel like Varvas is kind of cool, but at the same time, horribly. Just I don't want to mess with him. Clearly, nobody wants to mess with him. <laughs> Shit. Like, I feel like if he was a character in a movie, he would be the coolest character ever. You know what I want to in know? In real life, though, that's just horrifying. Yeah, yeah. I want to know what the interaction between him and Ronnie's mom was. Yeah, Or what dude. happened. Because Ronnie's dad was like, dude. Just. Damn. She didn't say shit. And I was like, I mean, you know her. She was like... She's a fucking fuck a whip. She's a bull whip of a woman. You know what I'm saying? She will not shut up if she even re- senses the remotest thing about you. Um, <laughs> under any other circumstances, her husband would have been like, <laughs> "That's funny," because yeah. you know they, there was a lot of tension between them. The horror. Uh, so much so that the, now they're divorced. But, but he was horror stricken. But he was he was like, dude. Out of us. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? But anyway. Damn, dude, that is horrifying. That's the story of fucking Barbas, the guy. I gotta say, that is a pretty epic tale. Yeah. Uh, but but that all sounds, you know, like we live in a, a amazingly astonishing, exciting life. But that those events happen, you know, the the previous videos events happened, you know, when I was very young, and uh, you know, th- this shit just dropped into my life out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> You know, and 10 like, years like or so the, later. Like early 2000s? In the early 2000s. Yeah. You know? Uh, Damn, so dude. It was like a what the it's fuck It's horrifying moment. that Barbas knows exactly where we live. Well, the good thing is he hasn't shown up ever since. Well, yeah, I guess he's on our side. Is he? I don't know, man. What is Barbas? Is he just like a hired guy? Because like, he's still alive I don't shit. know, man. My thing is, is you got to assume that Barbas is like doing his own thing. Yeah. Because, you know, all his, his chums got either killed or arrested, but he still was, like, loyal enough to be like, I got you, homie. I feel like he's, like, a Rambo-like character. No, because Rambo wouldn't be doing to it. Yeah, Rambo would be, like, straight up killing Barbas if he could. I don't think he could, dude. I don't know, man, but it was it was a thing that happened. <laughs> yeah, that's horrifying, dude. If Barbas showed up and asked me questions, I'd be like, nope, I'm dead. I'm and then just die there, just on the freaking stoop. It was a, it was it was a guy that I saw. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like what the fuck? Anyway, uh, that's the story of Barbas and the second part to uh, our dad chronicles. I guess uh, there are a very few other dad stories, but I felt that these were the most imperative. Uh, in a lot of ways, this colorful character of a person that I barely knew. I mean, he sure as hell made an impression, right? <laughs> I mean, fuck. So, while I didn't know him well, I do wish I kind of got to know him more. Uh, but I'm kind of glad that I didn't, given yeah. what he was involved with. Yeah. So, I mean, whatever, right? You know, you win some, you lose some. I wonder some. what happened to the ape. For, hopefully he got shot in the face. <laughs> God damn. Okay. Um... I'm all about apes, but uh, chimps piss me off, dude. I yeah, hate chimps. Suck. Chimps can kiss my fucking balls. I dude. don't like those orange orangutans either. They're hideous. I don't mind an orangutan, but a chimp, I fucking mind. The only cool chimp is like in Planet of the Apes, Caesar and shit like that. But uh, fuck a real chimp, man. I want to punch them in the damn gonads. Anyway, tell us what you think about chimps. Tell us what you think about this video. Hit like, share, subscribe, and those notification buttons. Yeah, guys, we're wrapped. Right.